For a few years, I've been dreaming about starting experimental art spaces in pre-demolition buildings in Victoria. Pre-demolition buildings really do make the best art spaces. A really fun sense of recklessness about it, but there's also a sense of care and professionalism and you can exhibit something properly. I was really ready to bring that to Victoria. I think that the house as a space is really interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, galleries are these white boxy spaces and people feel this sense of um, reverence when they go into a gallery, you know? That can be a really cool thing because it can sort of take you away from everything else and really into an art piece, but it can also be a little bit alienating and a little bit um, difficult to access for some people. Sometimes art can be this elitist thing that's stuck behind gallery walls and I, I want everyone in the world to be able to access art. It's, it's beautiful and it's important, sometimes it's tragic, but it speaks to our, our world. We're both pre-service teachers at the University of Victoria. Our main goal for this project was to bring students out of high school settings and immerse them into a community arts space to let them share their thoughts with the greater community. Living on an island, sea level rising, it's not, it's not exactly a good situation. Everything in this house makes you think like, oh, what if that happened? What if this happened? This project allowed students to come up with a theme for the exhibition and to have that power and then invited community artists to support the voices of high school students. And I think both the high school students and the community artists really appreciated that, really appreciated that intergenerational connection and giving the voice to the younger generation. Kay and I are the curators, but ultimately like without artists, without musicians, poets, etc., we couldn't have made this happen. The short-term nature basically meant we could not promote it properly but that kind of had its own benefit because there was like a little bit of like a cult-like mystery to the whole thing in terms of how people found it. I wanted to laugh and smile and also cry at the same time because I just couldn't believe the range of people that came through the house, young, old, just everyone, everyone was here and it was, it was just really amazing to see. The precarious nature of this house kind of lends itself well in a symbolic way to the precarious nature of our planet right now with climate change and this like impossible situation that we face as a global community. And so there's this idea of, you know, the house is about to be demolished, you gotta do something. If you wanna get in here and do art, you have to do it now. And I really love what um, this one artist, Rebecca Montgomery did. She made a 3D copy of the house. And I love the symbolism of cheating fate. They can't demolish the house now, not all of it, because we have a copy. <laughs> And uh, I love that as a symbolism too for like creative solutions to climate change and how you know like we all need to get involved and lend our skill set, whatever that is. As installation artists, we were able to you know create a spectacle and bring people together. But what can everybody else do? Mm -hmm.